What yeah. will happen if we go there? What will happen? They will kill you. And what about the role of the UN? I don't see they'll survive here. They won't keep the peace. The action which has been taken against me and against my people, it unites our people in one front. Therefore, my position is stronger than I think any time before now. Manifesto group. Yeah. Group. Manifesto group. Ali Madi. Yeah. 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 He says they're going to take the vehicle. Wait, wait, wait. Have you been up this way before, guys? Yes, 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 yes. yes. Okay. Ali Mahdi people. Ali Mahdi people. Yeah. Ali Mahdi. You want to go? What's the idea? Go to the harbor. Huh? Yesterday, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Just, Just to the harbor. Same area as we visited yesterday. You want to the harbor? Yeah, yeah. But the harbor is there. Yeah. It's there. There's no road for harbor there. Yeah. If you want to have one, yeah, you can pass yeah. here. Yeah. Okay, yeah. this is dangerous okay, we'll now, pass today. Yeah. Okay, okay. You can go yeah. through, yeah. through this road, then you will reach Hub. Through yeah. this way? Yes. Okay. This, is, this is a very dangerous place. Uh. problem up there? There is a tip here. From here to that, you know, to that um, building. Between here to that building, there is a tip. We are, we are fighting with those tips. What yeah. will happen if we go there? What will happen? They will kill you. They take the vehicle, your vehicle, if you go there. We would die if we went. They'll kill you if we go there. Oh, wait, wait. They will, they will kill us if we go there. Oh.
and what sort of problems are you facing getting the food in here? Well, there's constant problems with uh, the security here. It changes on a daily basis from police to USC and various other factions. What are they called? Ashamud. Ashamud. We have to share the security, share the food. It's not good. Um, the food is difficult to unload, difficult to handle. Um, we could bring in a ship every week, but we bring in a ship every month. It's very difficult to make beach landings and uh, you know, enormous amounts of expense are gone to for helicopters and half a dozen ships that we use. So. But you're seeing looting and killing here on a fairly regular basis, are you? I wouldn't say on a regular basis, but once a week people die in this port over rice. You were saying you had some looted yesterday? I think we lost a uh, hundred tonne of food yesterday. How did that happen? Lack of security. Lack of coordination between untrustworthy situations. So people take it from under your eyes, there's nothing you can do about it? Nothing you can do about it at all. I'm not here to fight, I'm here to deliver rice. That's a tough job. It's difficult. Now what about the role of the UN? Do you envy them their role? I don't envy their role at all. I don't see they'll survive here. What do you think will happen to the UN and why? I've seen a lot of anarchy here. As much as I've, seen, I've been in the kitchens and I've seen the starving children, here there's millions of dollars worth of rice. 50 unarmed UN soldiers, are, they can watch. That's all they can do, watch. They won't keep the peace. We've got to go.
He's right over there, please. Hey, good to see you. Hey. How are you? Fine, how are you doing? Good to see you. see this afternoon that we have also picked up many weapons to make their uh, villages a safer place to live. Sida u jeedina oo indhina markaati ka ah waxa aragtaan hub badan in aan maanta magaalada aan ka soo aruurinay oo magaalada nabad ay tahay indhina ku arka hubka. And that uh, that our efforts to make uh, uh, the district of Bidale a safer place for everyone is what we are continuing to strive for daily. And uh, as we have done in previous meetings, uh, I would ask uh, the, uh, the chiefs if they have any particular and specific things that they would like to address to me this afternoon. Chief of the chief elders. I see. <laughs> وأنا <laughs> Sir, since the troops they arrived right here in Baidawa, we sleep. We gotta sleep. We didn't have it before, no sleep. Uh, the people they used to they used they didn't used to have about a food. They, we have a food right now. Women sleep, men sleep, children sleep, but safety. Before they didn't have no problem to sleep. And we thank you for that, sir. Tell him that uh, I always want all of the people of not only this district, but the villages and throughout Somalia to always be able to sleep and do as they please. Tell all of the elders here that, that, that we can help out with their problem if we know where the weapons are and where the people that hold those weapons are. And everyone here can help us out in telling us where that is. فركلي فورمنا قضاء سومالي وكما ما هذا أول بو هدا إذن كذي رشا قين عيدهن هوب كمشان ويا الله أم توجدي هالكان الجوعان أنا واحد كذي مصوب إنكرنا بس هو حاول زمان إنا صوت عاون وإنا عاون كان إذن كذي لان كيبور هكا بروجو أو قرب ميالك أنا لان نفتيس بتوجد قرب هم قرب كويدي سلاح أو جي جيف ما he said to you, sir, the guy, he said to you, he's the elder chief in Burakawa, and he said to you, it's not weapons around here, no gangs. And uh, he was trying to ask you only food, and he is the one, is the gang, and he is the one, the bad person. Very good. Tell the uh, senior elder of Barakaba, make sure we get his name when we finish here, and tell him we will come back to see him in Barakaba, and when we come back to see him, we will make sure he is there so that we can coordinate directly with him. I'm glad to walk with you. And uh, if God is saying yes, I mean, God will, I'm going to go first in Burakawa. I'm going to work with you and I'm going to point in everything about it. Very good. Okay. Since the American troops get weapons and wherever we are working, we will pick them up. And I'm doing the same in Badera. So I'll show you why. I'm going to talk about it. That's why Somalia is going to be here. I'm going to show you how to do it. I'm going to show you how to do it. I'm going to show you how to do it. I'm going to show you how to do it. I'm going to show you how to do it. No belawa tu. Ina ad uher gesho ona tiju weng lega garang ubah ngahed. You want it, but since you guys, we came here, it was the peace. 
then we wonder that peace is going to be all over. Colonel, what are you hoping, what sort of atmosphere are you hoping to create by talking to the village chiefs like this? Well, the, uh, it's been my experience that the, uh, the village chief and the village elders uh, are held in, in very high esteem. Uh, and uh, what they provide in terms of guidance and getting the word out to their people, they are really the conduit between what we're doing and the opportunity to meet collectively with them, uh, describe our objectives and where we're going together, uh, I think, I think is, is a great way to go. And uh, I take every opportunity I can to meet with them uh, because they talking directly to you, you're getting a sincere feeling of how well things are going, where the problems are, saying uh, we've got certainly problems that we have to continue to work on. But, uh, but I just feel this is the leadership of, of the district here in Bidale, and we've got to have their support They've got to have ours if this thing is going to work together. They seem to want you to clean up the banditry and the weapons here. Do you believe they're genuine, and can you do it? I would, uh, you know, as I told them, every weapon that we see, we're, uh, we're collecting. Uh, but uh, there certainly are a lot of weapons in this country, as I think you're well aware of. But I think uh, integrating uh, their security forces uh, in with ours at the checkpoints, uh, building a better uh, network of communication systems of where the problems are, so that we continue to alleviate the bigger ones. Uh, I, I think this is, uh, is all the right direction in, in what we ought to be doing. And a step towards some sort of political solution or stability, do you think? Well, I think uh, the key aspect of our mission over here is providing stability and providing a stability umbrella so that the Somalian people in whatever part of Somalia can kind of put their lives back together, put their villages back together, put their cities back together, and, uh, and put their own governments back together uh, in these clans and in these tribes. Do you think you're getting there? I think we're, uh, we've made tremendous progress, and every day uh, we certainly see a visible sign, such as you see to here today. Uh, these uh, tribal chiefs uh, have come together, this is the second time in about eight years, and the first time was about 10 days ago right here. And to me, that's a very, very positive sign. And you don't hear a lot of disagreement. They're all concerned about one thing, safety, that safety providing the ability to feed their people and let the people do what, what they want to do within their own country. And I think you can't ask for any more than that. And you're getting on well with them? They're cooperating? Absolutely. Uh, I couldn't be more pleased. And I think it's meetings like this that show uh, a genuine concern and a bond between what we're trying to do and trying to get them back up on their feet.
point of a, an operation like today, what are you trying to do? These villages are fairly remote. We haven't been able to get in here by uh, vehicle at all, or the trucks that we use. So the Marines have um, very kindly made helicopters available. And we've been able to bring these foods into these sort of isolated villages. None of these people have seen any of the aid food. Uh, they've got a few farms around here, but it's not the season yet, so it's to get food out to these regions. They seem to have got crops growing in the field, but will they need this to sustain them until they can harvest? Yeah, yeah, they will. They, this harvest won't come in for three or four weeks. That's a long time in this country. So this will keep them going until that time, but it will also give them a little bit of surplus so that instead of eating all their crops, they can keep some for seed for the next season. The next season's a big growing season. They need a lot of seed. If they eat their crops, they're back to square one. Were you able to do this sort of operation before the military arrived to help you? No, oh, no, no, we weren't able to get to these areas at all. There was also the security problem as well as the trucking problem. So the two factors sort of discounted this out altogether. Now with the helicopters and the security that's afforded by the range, we can get out of here. So it's making a change? Making oh a yeah, making a big difference to these people. Yeah. So it's good. It's good to see. Yeah, can you get this on tape? Maybe you can run it. Here we have a stupid Turkish news crew trying to yes. manipulate the crowd. Look, watch this, guys. Watch this. It's going to run. Watch this. This is pretty Look. Unbelievable. Oh, I know. We're going to have them running after the food. Running after the food, yeah. These people don't run in their whole lives. It's going to look really realistic. international agencies are scaling down their presence in Somalia. Today, aid workers and United Nations personnel arrived safely in neighboring Kenya. The bloody weekend ambush, which killed more than 20 Pakistani soldiers in Mogadishu, is now raising the question of whether the United Nations is losing control in Somalia. We were penned down in our compound. We, weren't be able to, we haven't been able to move. There's been a lot of people killed. Uh, Pakistanis have been captured and tortured. It's been quite bad. Pakistan has nearly 5,000 troops in Somalia, a larger presence than any other nation contributing to the UN effort. The ambush, which killed 23 of its soldiers and wounded at least 50 others, is the most serious attack on United Nations troops for more than 30 years.
Good 20 or 30 minutes. Uh, kind of delayed our entry in this building, so it was uh, very dangerous for us to move any closer while that was happening. So in this building here, in the cheer front, was taken by my third platoon, which these are members of right now. Sitting right here, they're guarding their own stuff. In this room uh, off the corner, there's more massive shoes in them. They didn't even bother putting their shoes on. They just took the check out of here. And the shoes still laying there. They left them bigger.
to see you. Jeremy Thomas from ITN. Um, it's also good morning. Ron. Good morning. My name is Ron Allen from ABC News. Very good. Yeah. Yes. yes, I think so, yeah. How are you? Hello. So where do you want to... Uh... All right, yeah, thanks. General, you must be feeling a bit like the most wanted man in Somalia at the moment. Well, some people are thinking, I think it's so, but I'm not thinking that I'm wanted. But do you feel that the UN forces are going to come for you any minute? Well, uh, 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 they may, they are free to do so, but uh, I don't think that there is a reason to, to come and uh, uh, start me. There's no, no risk. And you have no intention of walking into the United Nations and giving yourself up? Uh, well, uh, 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 going uh, going to the United Nations and giving yourself up. Why? I have done. I have to do so. There's no reason to do so. I'm a free man. I'm staying in my land. I'm Somali. I'm with my people. Therefore, I'm in a very good position. So what is the next step? What can you do now? How can you get back to talk to the United Nations? Well, I think uh, dialogue can be uh, open. Um, if the United Nations and uh, the United States government review their position, and uh, come really to the dialogue, to talk. So I'm ready to undertake uh, a talk. And uh, I believe that uh, the problem, what has happened, can be solved uh, through dialogue, through talks, and uh, just what are you willing do you think to meet the demands of the recent Security Council resolution are you willing to fall in line with those demands well uh, I think uh, as I have expressed it before this resolution uh, was issued hastily it is one side, and uh, it has been issued on the basis of wrong information um, provided by Unison from here to the Security Council through uh, Secretary General, and uh, the Security Council, without uh, investigating what has happened, who is wrong and who is right, they have issued this. Therefore, it is one side, and uh, I request that uh, this uh, should be reviewed and recorrected. I hope the Security Council will consider this request and will, in, will investigate by sending not only a Security Council. Uh, I have asked it the international community to send independent and impartial uh, committee uh, to investigate what has happened and discover the truth and uh, justly act accordingly. What do you think the last few days of military action by UNISOM has actually achieved? I think uh, they have undertook, was undertaking um, incorrect action against the Somali people. The destruction 
of the um, important civilian target, which uh, include, include the, 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 the factories, uh, the workshops, uh, the other important places, Radio Mogadishu, which is the property of Somali people, uh, the genocide committed against Somali people through air raids, through bombardment, and uh, through shooting uh, against innocent and uh, um, uh, people who are conducting just their feeling to show the world what has happened and this unjust action has been uh, killed and uh, this I think the world should not uh, look just as expectatories but take actions moral and effective uh, action which can produce peace and stop killing of Somali people innocently. Where has it left you? Has this action damaged you, weakened your position, or do you think, if anything, it has strengthened you, has made you more popular with the people? Well, you know, this, I think, uh, you have, you are a journalist, you are, the press have to investigate. But uh, since the action which has been taken against me and against my people, against my people, was wrong, it, you know, unite our people uh, in one front. Therefore, my position is uh, stronger than I think any time before now. What about your military position, apart from your popularity? Are you a weaker man as a, as a military and political leader now? Well, uh, um, you know, um, the, the power, as I believe, and uh, since I undertook this struggle, removing, you know, fighting against this other regime, removing this regime, uh, was uh, aimed to restore in Somalia a democratic uh, system uh, to free, ele free and fair election, one vote, one name, and uh, to uh, rehabilitate uh, what has been damaged. Therefore, peace and development was the most important aim to uh, my uh, to our objectives as SNA, as a Somali aspiration, uh, myself, and uh, uh, these objectives, uh, we believe, will be realized. Those who want to uh, um, obstacle these objectives, which is our political agenda, will not succeed because the, uh, the, the best power, the, 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 the best way is the, when the people has in his hand the power. So my aim was to uh, create condition that the power be handed over to the people. In order the people elect it is representative correctly, freely, democratically, and uh, without any restriction. Some uh, people, some countries, are now acting against these objectives. And I don't understand why. But why, the, why, why uh, the, uh, I'm asking myself, did they want the, 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 the same uh, Siad Bar regime? or people of the same category will come to take power in Somalia? Why this obstacle has been created against us, against SNA, and recently against SNA, 
SSDF and SNDU, which has uh, succeeded to uh, uh, make peace between community leaders, uh, between community uh, uh, representatives who have been gathered here in Mogadishu. And on 5th of this month, we succeed. And that the, now the, 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 this, uh, the, we succeeded this uh, written agreement with all the people of Somalia has applied. But those who are against, like Yunson, has not applied, has acted to obstacle that we don't succeed this. What they want. It's clear what they want. So they are against our objectives, our political agenda, the interests of the Somali people. They have another interest. It is very clear for everybody in this world. Do you think, finally, that the events of the last 10 days, including June the 5th, have taken us closer to the long-term aim of rebuilding Somalia, bringing peace to Somalia, or do you think it has been a major setback? I believe it is a major setback. Because while we were expecting that the humanitarian assistance to go ahead, rehabilitation and uh, reconstruction program be undertaken, military action, fighting against the Somali people, mistrust created now between UN and Somali people, this is absolutely a setback of the situation. And can it be recovered, the situation? Well, I think it, uh, if uh, correct people be assigned to represent UN in Somalia, <laughs> there will be uh, remedy, I, I believe. But same people who has committed now all these mistakes and uh, act of criminality cannot solve nothing with us, with Somali people. Somali people have lost the trust in them. Yeah, no, thank you very much indeed. Thank you.